I ended up coming here because I went for a Czech uh, nuclear scan for something entirely different. I already have heart issues, but I also have CPOD, COPD. They discovered that the clav subclavicle artery was blocked 70%, which took priority over the changes that were made. Dr. Basic's office had made an appointment for me immediately, and I came here, and a week later, I was in to have it repaired. So subclavian artery stenosis or occlusion can present in two ways. Sometimes if you already had a heart bypass, one of the arteries used to bypass the heart comes off the subclavian artery, which is basically an artery that is in the chest and one of the branches can be used as a bypass graft for the heart. The subclavian artery also has another vessel called the vertebral artery that goes along the back of your neck into your brain and it can be responsible for causing blood flow to the back of the brain and if there's a limitation there, so if you have a subclavian artery stenosis there, the vertebral artery will have less flow and it can cause dizziness. The third way a subclavian artery stenosis can present is if you have narrowing in the artery and you're having a lot of hard time using your arms, specifically brushing your hair, doing the laundry, lifting up your hands high above your head, sometimes while gardening, etc. It can present as some symptoms and then you get a study done, which in our case would be a Doppler study, would be the most common study. You would be able to see a subclavian artery narrowing again, that's a stenosis, or a blockage, that's an occlusion. So once we diagnose you have a subclavian artery stenosis, there's two ways to fix it. Usually it's a minimally invasive procedure that we do the access of the artery right through the wrist artery, similar to when you have a heart catheterization or a cardiac catheterization. Occasionally we have to go from the leg artery in the upper part of the leg or in the groin area. It's much more common for us to do it in the wrist. So we go in through the wrist, we put a tiny little catheter in the size of a stirring straw, we go up into the artery right around where the clavicle bone or the collarbone is. We take some pictures, confirm that there is narrowing. Once we see that there is a narrowing, we go ahead and measure it. And then we go ahead and put a stent in. The stent is not painful. You can't feel it. It really doesn't impact you in any way, but right away it improves the blood flow through that area, which then either improves the circulation of the heart in the, in the case of a heart bypass or improves blood flow to the back of the brain for balance and dizziness, etc. If I like to garden, I'm if I'm out in my garden and I would feel myself getting dizzy, I would literally sit down. And it got to the point where the two dogs that I have, even if I walked from one room to the other, they would walk on either side of me. I preferred having a procedure outside of the hospital. Um, I came in, I was seen, taken back right away. Everyone was very cordial, very paid um, attention very close monitoring of the blood pressure, of everything else, telling me exactly what they were going to do, how they were going to do it, what to expect. Um, Dr. Noor was absolutely incredible. Just explained exactly what she was doing. She's a very busy woman. She was marvelous. She and If you had asked me a month ago if I could have done this without getting dizzy, the answer would have been no, and I'm 65 years old, okay? If you would have asked me if I could walk around the room, I would not have been able to do this without getting dizzy. If you would have asked me if I could bend over and touch my toes without falling down, I would not have been able to do that. I would not be able to do this okay i would not be able to stand on one leg like this and with all the other heart difficulties that i have to deal with that i have been dealing with since i was 56 this is like a brand new life for me